Corey Hare, the art archaeologist. So I want to welcome you to um, a quick flip and tips of my very first eco die with no die. This is all done with just, I did put some big iced tea tea bags, about six of them in the bath along with the papers and I bundled them together with my little Dollar Tree racks like I always do. And um, all of these little splotches of color here are onion skin, but I could not tell you where I got this purple or the green in the leaves. These are flower petals, excuse me. These flowers were actually purple from the grocery store. So I don't know if that had something to do with it. Generally speaking, I've done a lot of kits and the flower colors never translate into the kit, so it could have something to do with that. But I wanted to go through this with you real quick and show you. It's just amazing, all the detail. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna, I did this on medium high, so just beneath a boil. I don't like my papers to boil. I don't want the water spitting up because I use dye usually. So that's why I don't let my water spit up. Plus I just want to be safe. And um, I do that for between an hour and an hour and a half. I did get a lot of blackness and I noticed that my bottom sheet, which I'm not sure which one that is, will come across it as I flip through them. Um, the bottom sheet always tends to get a little bit more cooked than the others. So I'm thinking I'm even maybe just gonna do the medium high for maybe like 20 minutes just to get it good and hot and then turn it down for an hour and maybe get a little less black. Sorry about that, my dogs saw a squirrel. <laughs> so like I was saying, I don't know if I can get a little less black. I'm not sure if it's from the tea or what's happening, but um, the lighter parts of this kit are quite grungy, and I did spray all these papers with alum, of course, like I always do. That's a given, I always do that. So not really sure what happened. But I am, I really love the results. I'm so just mystified by all the colors that came up in this kit. And, you know, I love to watch eco dye videos here on YouTube of other artists. And one of my favorite eco dye artists is Susan Taylor Brown. And then Rosemary Morris has done quite a bit as well. And, um, I just love to watch people do these, and I've seen so many. Uh, Nina Rabina did a really nice kit. Oh, I've got dogs barking today and phone calls. We're trying to get vehicles fixed, and we've got a lot going on in this house this morning, so uh, at least I can um, edit out the interruptions for the most part. So, um... Uh, as I was saying, you know, there's so many great videos on here of eco dye kits with no, um, you know, unnatural dyes with, you know, people using avocado seeds and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So I really love to watch those, but I've always added color into my kits until now. And since we're just on it, today is August 10th. So I've got time. I want to make a few more kits like this of the uh, eco dyes without any artificial dyes in them. But I also just made a couple other kits that I used dye and I used very little of it. I really watered it down big time. So those kits are much lighter and I intend on doing a bunch more of those while I have time this season so that I can make journals and stuff this. Okay, sorry, I had another phone call. So the nice thing about this kit is I folded all the pages in half and these are eight and a half by 11 Canson mixed media paper. It's the only paper, it is my go-to eco dyeing paper. So this is the bottom or the top because it's got the great lines in it. So at least I only have to deal with that on half of a page and I actually 
actually really love how grungy and beautiful this page came out. So, um, yes, I want to do a bunch more of these this season and see what I can come up with. I just bought a bunch of um, Susan Taylor Brown's Eco Dye Kits. They are very affordable. And I'm going to be making some journals with hers and mine combined. And we don't have an agreement or anything. I just really love her eco dies. So I'm going to be showing those off. That'll be a treasure hunting Tuesday video because it's such a treasure that I hunted up. So it, these just really came out so lovely. I'm impressed, but extremely grungy this kit so I'm not sure if it's because I had it too hot or if it's the tea I did a lot of baby's breath in this kit so and then these leaves are from a tree and they come on a long stem I think you saw them when I was pulling them off and they have a bunch of little tiny leaves up the stem and they really bring a lot of color into the mix so these are also from a tree and then these are from a tree. I generally stick to trees so that I don't have to deal with being poisoned. <laughs> I've spoken about that in the past. Now all of these are onion skin off of the yellow onion and I did get a little bit of red onion skin in here but I'm not able to differentiate between the two. I got some really nice mirror images. Um, I tend to to put a leaf on top of the back side of the flower because the back side of the flowers don't print that well in my experience. So I think for the next kits that I use where I fold them in half to get the mirror image that I'm not going to use um, those daisy style flowers. I might use baby's breath because you can get a mirror image of the baby's breath and then you can get of course a mirror image of the leaves but look at the veining. The veining really took beautifully in a lot of these leaves. I believe these are from a cottonwood tree and then these are aspen. I've got a lot of aspen leaves in here and the aspen leaves are very finicky. You can get just the outline of the leaf like this or you can end up getting veining and color it is just such a roll of the dice you know and I do love to gamble so eco dyeing is right up my alley and then when these have the exact opposite of course that's just from the page being folded and then the mirror image of these are in here I just didn't line them up so here's this one, but I'm definitely going to be doing just leaves coming up soon because I really want to take advantage of that mirror image. I see so many beautiful kits where people have done that. Here's a, a kind of okay example of that right here. I got a lot of grays in here and a lot of black. So I'm thinking, look at all that baby's breath. I just love how that came out. I'm really thinking this was, right here was the bottom page, but I'm not sure. So um, really just incredible results. Every time I do this, it's always so magical and so different. So I really hope you give this a try. And I hope that you try it both ways like I have with the dyes and the um, doing it straight up without any dyes. So you will get a lot of color from the onion skin. And I really, in this kit, broke it down really into very small little pieces because I wanted a sprinkle of color throughout. And I think it worked pretty well. So here's what I did and this is what I got. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to, as always, lots of fun stuff going on on this channel. And look forward to all the eco dye kits that are coming up. And then, of course, I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I used so that you can get great results on your own eco dye kits, okay? So thanks for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.